Good morning everybody. Silas back again today. It's a little bit chilly. I still haven't found my coat. I'm going to check in one more spot before I leave here. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today. All of my kids were sick over the weekend with some sort of congestion and cough and that sort of stuff. Just that time of year. Especially with kids and then when your kids get it, you get it. Not much you can do about it. You can wash your hands all you want to, but when you're around three little monkeys, it doesn't take long for you to get sick too. Over the weekend, I loaded a bunch of stuff up on my trailer out of my backyard. I had a kennel in my backyard for my dog and I had to put her down last winter and she was she was really old she was a golden retriever and I think she was 13 13 or 14 years old and golden retrievers usually only live 10 to 12 years so she was pretty old but she just her health was going down she couldn't walk anymore and we tried different medicines and different things and nothing was working so it finally got to the point to where it was just the humane thing to do to put her down and went ahead and took the kennel down and there was a tree limb hanging down, so I went ahead and ripped it out. And then I had a lawnmower. I bought this two years ago, I think. Yeah, two years ago. I mowed my own yard all year long. And then I thought, man, for the amount of time I spend mowing and weed eating, I'll just pay somebody else 30 bucks to do it for me, and I'll do something else with my time. So this mower sat in my backyard for a year. The battery's completely dead. The kids left the key and the lights on. And so I just figured, you know what? I'm going to bring it out here. Park it in the building. Next spring, I'll see if it still fires up. If it still fires up with the new battery and fresh gas, then I'll go ahead and use it out here. If not, then I'll just sell it. It's the wrong time of year to sell it, or I'd just sell it now, honestly. But I'm going to park it in here out of the weather. I'm going to put that kennel in here as well. That way it doesn't get trees and stuff growing up through the chain link. And then the tree limb, I'm just going to drag off to the side. The roof off the kennel is just scrap. Then once I get all that done, I'm going to head back out to that farm cleanup. Hopefully it dried out enough over the weekend for me to get something done out there. My fingers are crossed. I'm really, really, really hoping. I mean, i I got to get that done. I've got to be back at the yard working most of this week. And so today is my only day to work on that. So we're going to give it a try. All right, I made it out here. It's looking pretty dry. I haven't been out back yet, but around here is looking pretty dry. So I'm going to clean up all this junk up front first. I got all this stuff right here. And I got a pile of stuff back there and get all that cleaned up uh, today for cameras I got the one I'm using now I got my GoPro with the suction mount that I can mount to the skid steer if needed and then I brought my hat with me so I can attach the GoPro to the hat so you can see a point of view of what I see and when I get in the skid steer back in the trees this is probably what I'll do just because with this mounted to the top of the skid steer back in the trees it'll get knocked off and I don't want to run over it and ruin it but for now for picking this stuff up I'm gonna put it on a time-lapse with this camera that way you guys can just see me get it all done real quick. All right, I got my GoPro up here. For now, because I won't be working in the trees, I got my hat just in case, in case I switch back there. But I got all the junk around this area. Now I just got to run out back and start grabbing stuff out there. If it's not too muddy, I'm going to drive the truck back there. But the first trip, I'm just going to take the skid steer because I can get this out of the mud, no problem. I made it no problem. Drove this right back here. I'm gonna walk back up there and get the skid steer and drive it back here now. There's one low spot over there, kind of, you can see where I kind of went down in that little valley, and it's a little bit muddy there still, and that's why I didn't load the skid steer up on this up front, because I didn't want to have that extra weight. I didn't know if I could make it or not, which looking back now, I probably could have made it fine. But what I'm gonna do is walk back up there, get the skid steer, and I'm gonna go ahead and before I go up there and do that, I'm gonna tilt this bed up in the air. That way I can just drive the skid steer right up on the trailer 
and then we can take it on out back because most of the stuff I need to load is out back. All that's up here is this car, that truck bed, and there's a piece of farm equipment, a conveyor belt or something over there in those trees. So that's all that's up here. Most of the stuff is way out back. So I'm going to start out back and work my way towards the front. That way if we do get rain or something like that unexpected, it's not that big of a deal. I can just drive the skid steer right in here and grab this stuff easy. I don't have to worry about going all the way out back. Here's that soft spot I was telling you about. You can see I left some tire tracks in it. The skid steer would never get stuck in that. It's hard enough, but luckily with my truck, I got this downhill slope right here. I can get some minimum and go right through it with that momentum. Uh, that truck gets stuck super easy, so if I didn't have that downhill momentum going for me, I'd never make it through that. Luckily it's downhill both directions, so. I've still got this big tank as well. The problem with that is, is that's gonna fill up a good portion of that dumpster by itself. And there's a little bit more junk out back yet. So I may wind up taking that tank home and crushing it back at home just because I don't don't see a way of getting it in this dumpster. This dumpster isn't quite as tall as the last one you brought me. You may have noticed in the video I had to stop and back up a little bit right here in this area. I scooted these toilets back but I still didn't have quite enough or I didn't swing quite enough quite wide enough I guess is what I did wrong trying to clear around here and I almost snagged this white tank. I should have moved it out of the way as well. But I backed up, swung it a little bit wider, kept my tire right up against those, and I made it on through. Got the skidster loaded up and I realized now that I left the forks up front. Which I don't need the forks a whole lot, but I will need them for I believe that car, I don't want to tear it up too bad, and a couple of the hog feeders I'm gonna need forks. And that there I can get with the, the claw. The trucks I'm going to pull out of the trees with the claw. So I will need the forks eventually, but I'm going to go ahead and go out back and start dragging stuff out of the trees as much as I can with this like it is for now. And then if I have to, I'll just drive this all the way back up front, grab the forks, and come back again.
All right, I got the skid steer here, the forks back here now. I had to rip this tree limb off because I left my Sawzall battery at home. I brought the Sawzall with me over here in the truck and the blades and everything, but then I went off and left the battery at home. So it doesn't do me a whole lot of good. But I gotta get these hog panels out of here. They're keeping those. So I gotta get those out. I'll put those over there out of the way somewhere. The boat, I'm gonna move it out of the way somewhere. It doesn't go, or it does go if I wanted it, but I don't want it. So I'm gonna move it out of the way. And then I can get in here and get all these hog feeders out of here. That piece over there, that old uh, bale grinder, that's just scrap. It won't fit in the dumpster though, so I'll have to haul it back home. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna lower my trailer back down, then I'm gonna take the truck, flip it around, and take it out back. I'm gonna flip it around and park it facing that direction. That way it's out of the way. That way I can drag those trucks, because I have to go through there to get to those trucks. And drag them all along the field, and then I can park them right here in this area, and hopefully stack all these hog feeders or at least most of these hog feeders in the trucks. One thing that I did forget to mention when I'm wearing that up there is that sometimes when I put it on the uh, time lapse to where it goes really fast, with this here on my head, it kind of causes a little bit of motion sickness with people. I've had people complain about that before when the last time I used this hat actually, last spring. So I'm just giving you a little bit of forewarning about that. I'm about to do some fast motion while wearing this while we drag those trucks out of the trees. So just be prepared for that.
finally got it. That was a challenge and a half. There's only, on these trucks here, there's a good place to hook on the driver's side on the front. But there's nowhere in the middle really to hook. And on the passenger side, there's not really anything good to hook on either. Everything you hook on will bind up and wrap the chain around stuff and get stuck. So I was towing it from just the driver's side. And then the skid steer, it's a little bit slimy out there in that field still. So I didn't have very good grip. And then the rear brakes are locked up on this thing. So I had to drag the rear tires all the way out. So it was a slip and slide and mess. But we got it out of there. I put it up here. I'm pretty sure I can get two of these hog feeders in, these big ones. I'm pretty sure I can get two in the back of it. So I can get two in here and two in the back of the other one. I think there's only, yeah, there's, I guess there's only three of these big hog feeders. So if I can get two in this truck, get one more in these other square hog feeders in the other truck, That'll get rid of all this back here in two loads, other than that piece right there. Then I can put that piece and that other piece of farm equipment and probably what's left of that car, maybe. I don't know, that might be pushing it a little bit. I don't know if I can get all that in one load or not, but we'll see. So this beast does not want to budge. I got it to budge a tiny, tiny bit. But that front driver's side tire is locked up tight. Passenger side rolls. This side, I'm not sure if the back ones are sliding or rolling, but I'm pretty sure they're sliding too. So I got three wheels locked up on this piece of junk. And I can't get it to budge out of this hole that it's in. Once I get it going, I think it'll be fine, but getting it out of here is the challenge. So what I'm gonna to try to do is unhook the chain and drive the skid steer around to the back side of it and try to shove it forward a little bit. See if that'll help me any. This thing is just an absolute beast. It's stupid heavy. All the wheels are stuck up. It doesn't want to go straight. This field is soft, so I'm sinking a little bit in the skid steer. Don't have any good traction. It just does not want to cooperate. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive the skid steer around, pick up the back of it, and just shove it. I was trying to avoid tearing the tailgate up too bad, just because I think it would make a good wall hanger, but at this point in time, I don't really care. I just got to get this done. So if I can't get that tailgate off real quick, I'm just going to shove the thing. My GoPro's dead, so I won't be able to record much more, but I'm going to do my best to get it up there and then I'll charge the GoPro and I can show you guys some more stuff. All right, I got that turd bucket up here finally. Man, I think it was a piece of junk. It fought me every inch of the way. It kept going sideways up into the tree row as I was shoving it back. Didn't want to cooperate. I destroyed that tailgate and all the chrome and the emblem and everything on the back of it. I destroyed the grill in the front of it, so it's just a crusher now. What few parts it did have a rune, so just junk. I got the Ford there, and my GoPro is completely dead, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set my camera up just kind of at an angle, pointing towards the Ford. That way you guys can see me grab some of those hog feeders and stick in it. I'm going to load that one on my truck, so I'm going to put the tall ones in it. And then I'll put the short ones in this since my dad's going to come out here. And I'm not going to move this again. We'll wait till my dad hooks up to it with his hydraulic winch. And he's got a brand new cable. It'll just suck it right up on his truck, no problem. Because I'm not dealing with this thing anymore.
All right, I, I'm not gonna be able to get those hog feeders in the back of those trucks like I wanted to. So I just took the one that didn't have any writing on the side of it, flipped it over on its side, stuck it in the back of the blue Ford, and got the small ones in the back of the, the uh, Shiver National, <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. So I'm back up there now and load the Ford on my trailer. And my dad's supposed to be out and get that, that International here in a little bit. Uh, if he doesn't make it, I'll go ahead and run the Ford in, and I'll come back out again, and I'm going to take the other two hog feeders that have the cool writing on them and leave those upright, set them on my trailer, and then hopefully I can get that big... Uh, whatever it is on my trailer as well. I'll probably put it towards the front. That way it's nice and heavy on the front and I don't have to fishtail all the way home like I did with that boat. got it loaded. I'm going to pull forward up here where it's a little bit more open and strap it all down. Once I get it all strapped down, I'll give my dad a call, see where he's at. If he's not close, I'm going to go ahead and head back and then I'll come back here in a little bit and load those up and this up. And here's this one too. I'm going to throw this one in the back of my truck uh, on the next load. This is really cool in here. This is probably my favorite one. Jolly with the pig on it. It's got it on this side as well. I wish it was a little bit more there, but still, that's a really cool piece. We are loaded, we are strapped, we are ready to go. So I'm going to head out and take it nice and slow on these dirt roads so I don't lose anything. I'm not sure how well that tank strapped. I put two straps on it, so hopefully it should be fine, but I'll double check it before we get on the blacktop. But I'm going to run that into the yard, unload it, and come right back. We made it. I had to drive head on into the wind all the way here, and it's 30 to 40 mile an hour wind. So that was not a fun drive. That was about 45, 50 miles an hour all the way back. Any faster than that, my truck would start overheating because it's just a three speed. So cranking that many RPMs, driving head onto the wind with a gigantic sail. It's not exactly aerodynamic right here. But we made it, so I'm gonna get it unloaded. I don't think my dad's gonna make it back out or he's not gonna make it out period, I should say. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna load up that hay bale shredder and probably those two other hog feeders and I think that'll probably be about a load by itself and bring that in that'll be it for the day then tomorrow I'm gonna go back and get the job done I got that car one more piece of farm equipment that big tank and then the international out back hopefully my dad can get the international because I really don't want to have to load that on my trailer if I do it what I think I want to do is push it with the skid steer I want to tie the wheel straight and then push it with the skid steer suck it with the winch at the same time hopefully That'll get it on the trailer without too much issue.
All right, guys, I'm going to close this one out here and I'm going to turn this into a two part series, kind of like a little mini series. I don't know, is that considered a series when there's only two parts? But anyway, I'm going to end it here. Be sure to check out part two, there's a bunch more stuff coming up. Part two will begin with me loading up those hog feeders and that bale shredder and all that sort of stuff. And there's a bunch more stuff going on in the next part, so be sure to come back and check that one out. I'm going to release it 24 hours from when this one releases. So if you enjoyed part one, please leave a thumbs up and remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.